Good morning. This is a message that is intended for August 8, and I have entitled it, Longing for Home. And the verse that I want to use to start us today is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. Here's what it says. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our city in heaven, which is yet to come. You may have heard the story ripped right out of the news headlines about a week and a half ago about Cleo. Cleo is a four-year-old Labrador who went missing. And of course, her own owners were quite concerned. Uh, they couldn't find her anywhere. But the, but the story has a great ending because eventually they were able to find Cleo. And the place where they found Cleo was their home. Except it wasn't in the home in which the family was currently living, which is in Olathe, Kansas. Rather, Cleo was found in the home that they had lived in about two years ago in Lawson, Missouri. You see, the family hadn't lived in Missouri for that two years, but Cleo decided that she wanted to go back to the old home. And so she made her way back and ended up on its porch where the new homeowners found her, Colton Michael, the new homeowner there in Missouri, said, my wife and I had just gotten home from work and Cleo was laying on the front porch at the front door, just, just laying there waiting for somebody, it seemed like. Cleo wasn't wearing a collar, but she was too well-groomed to be astray, Michael thought. So he uh, had Cleo scanned and sure enough, she had a microchip. Thankfully, the owners had decided to put one in here. So uh, after getting the owner's name, they went on uh, Facebook and uh, they discovered that their dog had actually actually been missing for uh, about a week before. So um, I told him uh, when he called uh, the, the Cleo's owner that we had found his dog, but once I told him where we were, he was kind of speechless. You see, door to door, Cleo would have had to travel 57 miles from her current home in Kansas to her previous home in Missouri. And neither the family knows um, exactly how she made the trip, especially think about this. Um, she would have had to not only cross uh, heavy traffic to get to the house, but she would have had to cross at least one river. <laughs> it's just it's just this crazy story. But no matter how or why Cleo made the trip, her owner said that she he's just glad that they have found her. Here, here's what Drew, Cleo's owner, said. It, it just feels really good to be reunited with her. Really, she's everything to us. And I think those of us that are dog owners would agree how important our dogs are. I mean, what an amazing story of going home that Cleo is and reminds us. And, and let me just start with this. Ever Do you ever feel like returning to a former home? And yes, I am referring to uh, this, this biblical account that we have, that we had a, a different home and that we have a home prepared for us that's not even here on this earth. Um, I'm reminded of what C.S. Lewis had to say about returning home. He says this, he says, The sweetest thing in all my life has been the longing to reach the mountain, to find the place where, where all this beauty came from, my country, the place where, where, where I ought to have been born. Do you think it all meant nothing, all that longing, the longing for home? For indeed, it now feels not like going, but like going back. Are you longing today to go back to a home that was prepared for us in the very beginning in Eden? Are you longing today for a great reunion of some of your family and friends? Maybe you also are looking forward to the day when your creator God, your creator friend will say those same words of you. She's, she or he is everything to me, everything to me. Well, home is where the heart is. And um, it's interesting when you look at not just Cleo's desire to return home, but it, it's, it's always fascinating me when you look at the, the animal kingdom and, and, and there's this, have you heard about homing? Like if you look at zoology and they, Homing is, is kind of this ability of, of certain animals to return home even after they travel these great distances. And uh, my, uh, migration is a part of that where certain times of the year, birds, animals, they will return back home. Um, homing pigeon, of course, 
you know, comes to mind. There, there's many theories out there about how homing pigeons have managed to return home even when they're released hundreds of miles away from their loft. Um, and I, I was reading how a, a champion homing, uh, a racing pigeon, they can actually be released 400 to 600 miles away from its home and they can still return within the day. I mean, it's like, what? That's crazy to go and return in a day. And these amazing feats they, they, about racing and homing and pigeons, it's, it's all homings, uh, not just homing pigeons. All pigeons have this ability to return back to their roost. And I was reading about one 10-year uh, study that they did at Oxford University that concluded that pigeons, they think, and they're not 100% sure, they think that pigeons actually use roads and freeways to navigate. And in some cases, they even change directions at freeway junctions. Uh, there's other theories about uh, pig, uh, pigeons and other uh, animals that, that use Earth's magnetic field, uh, not just visual clues like landmarks. And, and some talk about even how they use the sun and the infrasounds, which are those low frequency seismic waves. By the way, did you did you read uh, just last week uh, the Air Force? Uh, they're 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 developing a new technology, going a little bit away from GPS, the global positioning. Um, they're going to actually Earth's magnetic field. I thought, wow, are we learning from the animals and the birds? You know, a puffin. Puffins are transported. They had this one study where they took this puffin and they placed him 3,400 miles from its nest, and they placed it in this closed container so it couldn't see anything. They released it 12 and a half days later. It returned those 3,400 miles back to its nest. We could talk about uh, loggerhead um, uh, turtles. They are amazing as well when you look at how their ability to, to migrate. I mean, all the way, whether it's you know North America, they go all the way over close to Portugal and all the way to South. I mean, it's just amazing to follow their migration routes. And it's been shown that they actually use Earth's magnetic uh, field to be able to migrate back home. So um, the ruby humming, uh, the ruby throated hummingbird is amazing to me because it's so small, and we get a chance to see those here in the United States. And, and you know, every spring they take this journey of five to six hundred miles. They go over the uh, Caribbean Sea, it takes them like twenty four hours. Can you imagine twenty four hours uh, without a break for those little hummingbirds to migrate down to the to the to to Mexico? It's again just amazing. The Arctic tern um, is a bird that actually has the longest recorded migration of any bird on the planet. They have taken round trip migration routes of twenty two thousand miles. I'm like, what? So again, I just I look at this this longing for a home that it's that it's not just in Cleo, it's not just in these animals. I mean, I, I look at salmon's. I've studied and looked at the the ability of red-bellied newts, um, how they have this homing ability. Monarch butterflies, they're 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 amazing in the way that that they migrate also 2,500 miles um, each year. So these animals, um, it's amazing because science they like to study, you know, how. You know, how is, how is a homing pigeon, how are these, these birds and animals able to find their way back home? And yet the question that continues to puzzle not only scientists but many is why? Um, why is it that they have this, this desire to return back to their original home? And again, I just throw out this idea to you that home is where the heart is. And so let me, let me just suggest to you that, that maybe we can learn some things about ourselves that we, that we find mirrored in the animal kingdom. And, and, and let me just ask some questions. Do, do you ever get restless? Uh, you ever get a, a little homesick? And yes, I'm, I'm thinking in my mind about heaven. Uh, do you ever long for something more than, than you currently have here on earth? Like, like there's a, there's a, there's an unsatisfaction, an unquenching. There seems to be something that resonates in your heart that, that wow, this just isn't seem completely my home. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says, God has planted eternity in the human heart. And I'm like, yes, that's, that's right. Like there's something in my DNA, in your DNA that longs for something more than what this earth offers us today. And again, I'm suggesting that that longing, that desire 
is because God has placed eternity in your heart. Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president here in the United States, here's what he said. Surely God would not have created such a being as man to exist only for a day. No, no, man was made for immortality. We were created to exist forever with God. John 15, verse 19, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. But did you hear what Jesus says? You do not belong to the world. That's where there's why there's this, this longing, this desire to go home. Uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 11, Peter says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Listen to how Peter describes our experience here on earth. We are aliens. We are strangers here in this world. Peter also reminds us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Don't you long for, aren't you looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14, that we read from the beginning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in right here with our scriptural passages. For this world is not our home. We are looking forward to our city in heaven, which is yet to come. I, I remember the that just reminds you of the gospel song, right? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Billy Graham said it this way. My home is in heaven. I am just traveling through this world. Friend, are you longing for home? Is there a part of you today that, man, I just, just longing to return back to that original home that we were created and to be able to be with God you know, I, I want to remind you here uh, during this message that a couple things about heaven. Number one, heaven is a certainty. It, it's real. First um, Thessalonians chapter 4, listen to what the Apostle Paul says. He says, the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Um, he, he goes on to talk about how God is going to return, but he's going to take us to, to, to dwell and to be with him. Um, Acts chapter 1 about the ascension of, of getting ready for Jesus to go back to heaven. Remember what the angel testified? This same Jesus will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Friends, I just want to let you know and, and, and remind you, uh, heaven is real. It is a certainty. There are over 1,500 references in the Bible to heaven. And, uh, that, and think about that. In the New Testament alone, one in every 25 verses is a, is a reference uh, to our home that we have in heaven. So heaven is a real place. Um, back to Paul when he talks about that uh, the Lord himself is going to descend. Um, he talks about with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ are going to rise. And then he says, then we uh, who are alive, we're gonna, who remain, we're going to be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus... We shall always be with the Lord. Uh, Paul then reminds us uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that we're going to have uh, an exciting thing happen to our bodies. He says in verse 52 and 53, and we shall be changed. Okay, For this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. You ever think about what this, this immortal body will look like? Um, it'll be amazing that, that we will be restored back to Eden-like state, that we won't have any decay, any corruption, any disease, any sickness. And I tell you, I'm just looking forward to the day when we will have brand new bodies. The Apostle Paul in chapter 3 of Philippians says this, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies, that it may be conformed to his glorious body. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but brand new bodies that conform um, to the original state, to that glorious body. I am looking forward to that day. Revelation 21 and 22 give this wonderful description about heaven. Let me read from 
Revelation 21. Listen to, listen to what heaven is going to be like. It says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. It's one of my favorite verses, right? God is going to dwell with us. I'm like, of all the places in the universe, God is going to come and live with us. Verse 4 says, There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. I'm looking forward to a day without suffering, a day without anger, a day without contention, a day without fighting, a day without war, a day without viruses. Uh, I just the, lo, recently, maybe maybe more than ever, longing, longing to be able to have these former things, these things we're experiencing now pass away and have a new earth. Isaiah 65 verse 17 reminds us about the new earth. It says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. So great will heaven be, so great will the new heaven and new earth be that we're gonna have, we won't be able to remember all those terrible things that are happening. So glorious and so grand is the new earth going to be. Isaiah chapter 11 tells us in verse 6 and then verse 9 some of the things that, that we'll do in heaven. It talks about the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Uh, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. I mean, there's going to be a brand new environment of love, not only among uh, animals, but also among uh, humankind. So we, we know that in heaven, we're, um, it's not simply uh, floating on a cloud playing a harp, which, um, which sometimes is portrayed. We're actually going to participate in real activities. Isaiah 65, if you start around verse 21, it says, They shall build houses. I'm like, what? They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. Nobody's you're going to build and somebody's going to come take your house. It go, you go a little further. It says, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. We're going to be active. We're going to be able to build. We're going to be able to plant. We're going to be able to do things with our hands. Heaven is a real place with real activities that we are going to enjoy. One of the things I'm looking forward to is being able to have dialogue and conversation with some of those men and women, those patriarchs and matriarchs of old, like in the Old Testament time, but not only in the Bible times, but also, you know, from the from from the New Testament time on, where there's a lot of people that I'm looking forward to have conversation and we know that we will still be able to know each other and identify each other and have conversation. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 8, verse 11, And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Well, right, if we're going to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then yes, we are going to be known. You will be known by your name, by your person, your friends, your family will, will know you. You're going to look a lot different, but they will recognize, they will know you, and we will get a chance to have great communication, dialogue, spend time together with no restrictions of time, no worrying about how long things take. Uh, Isaiah 66 says, And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. I love this verse for two reasons. One, it tells me the importance of Sabbath, that Sabbath is not something um, that's only for the Jews or something that, that Jesus just wanted to, to follow just because of tradition. Sabbath, not only did it exist at the beginning of this earth, but even in the new earth, Sabbath is going to be observed and kept. And the key part about Sabbath, point two, is that we're going we're gonna to worship God. Uh, I can't wait to be able to face-to-face -face acknowledge and appreciate and adore and worship God, Jesus, thank you so much for what you've done. So back to Revelation. This time I want to go to 22. So we looked at verse chapter 21. But look at the first few verses of Revelation 22 that give us some more uh, description about heaven. And especially about the new earth. It says, And he showed, uh, and he showed me a pure river uh, a water of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there, there shall be no more curse, 
but the throne of God of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And here's the highlight of heaven. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. I'll tell you, uh, I just can't wait to be able to see Jesus face to face. You can have the golden streets and all the others. I just want to be able to see Jesus face to face. Verse 4, this beautiful verse, and God is going to wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death nor sorrow nor crying and, and i tell you huh, with all the news that is going on today um i think there's a, a a greater longing than ever to want to live in a heaven where there is peace uh whether where love is the supreme that reigns um that we'll be able to we won't have to, to clamor, um, fighting, um, seeking, uh, uh, lording above others. Um, can't wait to where there's no more sorrow, no more death, no more virus, no more disease. And, and um, what I'd like to, to end with today is just a, a plea and a call for you to, to hang on. Um, heaven is real. And it, it's, it's not just Cleo that has a longing for home visit. Um, I'm going to take a, a step out here and say that I'm guessing that many of you that are listening to this message, and you have a longing for home. Um, and especially with the condition of the world today, the condition of our cities, uh, that there's a, an intensity of, um, a surge, a, a, a welling within us that, wow, we long for home. Friends, hold on. Um, make sure that, that every day you're, you're saying yes to Jesus. Make sure that uh, you don't allow the, the pull of the world, the, um, the lusts of the flesh, the desires that, that somehow we buy into at times, thinking that this is a better way than God's way. It, you know, it's all a, that's a lie. Uh, make sure that you just say yes to Jesus every morning. Um, yes, throughout your day, multiple times, and um, just continue to walk, continue to know Jesus, and heaven is yours. Um, you can you can know that even when things get extremely tough and difficult. Um, here with your job, with your health, with maybe a relationship, maybe you have something that's going on in your life that you're just uncertain. Um, let the hope of heaven, knowing that, that it is a certainty, let it buoy your spirits today. So let me conclude with 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for him that love him. I could, I could, I could sit here all day and try to ex picture what heaven is like and try to explain. There's not, it's not even close, and yet even that little bit that we can't imagine is amazing. <sighs> I think you join with me. Uh, in longing for home. Continue, uh, persevere, uh, continue to think. Uh, it won't be long, and we will be going home. Blessings on you for the rest of this day, and blessings on you and your family, your loved ones, your friends on this upcoming week. We long for home.